on ELBC Radio. Uh, like I said this morning, uh, we will be playing host to Montserrado County Senator uh, Abraham Daras Dillon uh, for the first time uh, on, 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 on the Super Morning Show. Uh, but Senator Dillon, again, I'd like to say good morning. Uh, thanks for accepting our invitation after many, many <laughs> invitations. <laughs> How are you this morning? Good morning, Vani. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, at last, we are here. <laughs> Finally. And we will make it at least more regular. Uh, when was the last time you appeared on ELBC? That was six years ago. Was that a reason for not appearing after six years? Yeah. What e was that? ELBC became a mess and a political tool for the ruling regime at the time. Professionalism was at a low. Mm -hmm. And so. Allegedly, no, I didn't say alleged. I'm saying it because when you, you have use, no evidence. When you use the radio station, a state broadcaster, mm. uh, as a tool for campaign against um, opposition or other Liberians, when their voices uh, are staff out, their views. Uh, are not as, as equal as the people from the ruling government, mm. then it becomes more like a political institution than a state broadcaster. All of this rescue mission uh, administration, led by President Joseph Mima Buaka, will want to ensure that ELBC will truly represent the voices of the people from all across the earth ruling party people, opposition people, no position people, religious people, Muslim, Christian, atheists, and you name them. Mm. That's what represents a true state broadcaster. And so uh, it was a deliberate decision to stay away. <laughs> You know how many times but, 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 you know how many times your, your, your you politicians will take advantage of the of the of the opportunity. The 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 thing is the bottom line is you want to get your message across. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's true. Uh, but sometimes when you lend credence to some things that people are doing that is not professional, uh, that is not right. Mm -hmm. When you lend credence to it, uh, you you are perpetuating, you are enabling what they're doing. Uh, I'm a senator. I'm homo to be. My voice is supposed to be heard by my people. Mm. There's some media institutions that have got editorial policy and direction that this group of people, they are our target for attack, attack them. So uh, your people who listen to that station all the time, may have the tendency of turning against you because they keep hearing some of the negative thing about you. Now you is politically motivated, mm -hmm. it's deliberate. Now sometimes when you go there, you learn in credence to their thing. Because I don't care what happens. Any political concussion, plot, once it's politically driven and it is planned, plotted, it will be uncovered. And then the truth will come and then the institution that's doing that will lose the credibility. But, but, but Senator, not only did you refuse to come on shows yet, uh -huh. you shunned interviews. I remember the last elections you had. Yes. You shunned ELBC interview. That was for me wrong. It was inappropriate. Yes. So, Respectfully so. Yes. So I said that. Uh, I said ELBC will get my voice <laughs> for different interviews. <laughs> different <laughs> stations. <laughs> I want to call a so <laughs> You know, when 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 the institution when any institution has a how you call it the policy, mm -hmm. they uh, if, even if they do a long interview with you, they do for that part of that interview that they supposed to spin negatively against you. When you go sit under the microphone, you give me the credence to do a <laughs> joke. But I love the media. I love the media somewhere out there. I know small thing. He knows more generally. Yeah, no, not generally. I just know small thing. A copy arrow and propaganda. Anyway, fast forward. One time, I lay, I did a live video, a live video from my home, mm. and I said, uh, President, we are. It's not the reason our health 
sector is down. Now it was doing President Weir's regime. Yeah, I remember that. Right. I said, President Weir is not the reason our health sector is down. Uh, he inherited it. Mm. President Weir is not the reason our education sector is messy. He inherited it. President Weir is not the reason we don't have good roads across the country. He, 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 he inherited it. President Weir is not the reason our economy is declining. He inherited it. The only thing is that everything that he inherited, none has improved. Everything has become worse. The propagandists from CDC caught that last part. They say, oh, yeah, they don't. They don't say President we are not a reason for all the Baba things in the country. I said he did he was not a reason for the things that were happening. He inherited the So they saw that as a positive They saw that aspect as a positive. Then they cut the last part that <laughs> all the things that he inherited that were not good, he has made not good or better, but he has worsened all. They removed that part. <laughs> so they carried that power. He said, hey, 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 you see? Yeah, 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 you know, so it is not, but I mean, let's move forward, uh, uh, Senator. Today, you hear, camera I water, you, subject, camera yeah, you, I hope you make this, you, you know, a regular place for you, yeah, sorry, Paul, especially when you are the chair of broadcasting at the city, also foreign affairs. But let's let's begin with the most recent. Yesterday, the way you started the things that you made me angry, the people go, Good morning, <laughs> <laughs> good morning, good morning to listeners from ERBC across the country. I yeah. want to uh, recognize. And give credit to Radio Bourgeois, uh, FM 98.1, they're doing a summer cast of this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bourgeois Radio. Yeah. Radio Bourgeois, FM 98.1, is also carrying live this interview. Okay. Okay. And let me say good morning to our, and good day to our online viewers, wherever you are around the world, both on ERB, uh, ER TV, TV and yeah. um, our social media platform. Yeah. Thank you again, Vani, for the invitation. Thank I like you. the way you started it. You just called me. <laughs> yeah, because I've been concerned. I just, oh, they hate all of me now. They may go to all the men. They hate all of me. <laughs> and at, at a certain point, he said, probably I don't want to, you know, threaten your job. Uh, yeah. yeah, because uh, on the we are regime, if he invited me here and I came, you won't be on air again. Nah, yeah, you don't be a lot of tough people. No. I remember. Show me mm. one person in the WEA regime who was declared security threat. <laughs> I was the only person in the opposition and in the but government. You, why, why you talk everything serious? When a whole, I thought it was just when a, when a whole government declares you security threat through the security apparatus, you must take it seriously. And my voice was a voice and still is being feared as you did here. And uh, I say this with no arrogance. From the time we were graced by God and blessed by the people to become senator, we made one commitment to obliterate CDC from our political landscape. CDC is an embarrassment to our democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are not too strong. I mean, you know I mean, democracy calls for open space. Yeah, open space. Look, let me tell you something. Everybody must have freedom. And the existence of rivals. Uh, yes, that's true. Everybody must have freedom. Everybody must feel free to do what they want to do once it is within the ambit of the law. But when an institution is a court that is affecting the thinking capacity and ability <laughs> no, of the law, so you have no, you know, you you have no. Evidence to show that it is a court. Anyway, let's not go there. No, no, let's, no, no. Let's, let's begin with the most recent. Let me learn on the thing now. Yeah, but I want to ask you. <laughs> I want to ask you a very. Uh, yesterday there was a meeting with officials from. Oh, we're straight ministry. in the real turn now. Yeah. Oh, we right. got a lot of things to talk yeah, about, yeah. including Liberty Party and all that. <laughs> but uh, yesterday there was a meeting with foreign ministry officials. Yeah. That focused on foreign service deployment. Right. What was that meeting all about? And the outcome. The meeting yesterday was uh, called by the Committee on Foreign Affairs, the Senate. Mm. Uh, I'm humbled to, to be the chair of that committee. That committee has Senator Sir Joseph as vice chair. We have Senator mm. Milton Bueson Garfield. Mm. Uh, Thomas Yaya Nimle. Don't forget, the both of them were foreign ministers before. Okay. Uh, we have Senator Albert Chie, and don't forget Albert Chie and Wilson Garfield were President Pro Temple of the Senate before. 
we have uh, uh, Senator Amara Kone being a former planning and former finance minister of Liberia. And then we have Senator uh, Daba Vapla of Grand Cape Bank County. We have uh, Senator uh, Nya Twain of Nima County. So that committee and Senator Edwin Snow, of course you know he become a former speaker of the House mm -hmm. and a ranking member of the Equus Parliament with regional network experience. So that committee is loaded. Uh, we don't take uh, that committee function lightly. Uh, you will know that um, at the latter days of the former government, mm -hmm. uh, there were employment and deployment of a lot of people in the civil service and deployed at our various missions abroad. Mm -hmm. And it raised concern because if you were employed close to 100 persons to deploy them in uh, the civil service in our diplomatic missions abroad in one day, especially on the heels of election and and doing the runoff immediately after the runoff when election results were already announced and the government is outgoing and you just dump people into the uh, uh, diplomatic missions like that, it raised concern. So uh, upon uh, taking office the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, we, we were keen on that, doing her confirmation hearing, I particularly as chair of the committee brought this up because it was concerning. Mm -hmm. And the minister committed that the ministry will do investigation and if those people were properly deployed, the ministry will have to continue with them or do proper reassignment when necessary. Mm -hmm. If they were not properly employed and deployed, mm -hmm. Uh, the appropriate action will be taken to repatriate them to the country. The committee, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs did the investigation. The reports have been uh, uh, concluded okay. and submitted to the President of Liberia. And the Ministry mm -hmm. is implementing the instruction of the President. What we are doing at the Senate mm -hmm. on the committee is the oversight aspect. Uh, we we have been gathering information, and we have confirmed that most of the people who were deployed, uh, some have not gone to work. Only eight have reported to duty. How many persons do we? What we're here? talking about 64, 68 persons, out of which only eight met the benchmark requirement for deployment for hiring into foreign service. Only it, according to the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs Authority, mm -hmm. in a meeting yesterday that we had, the committee met with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Authorities at, the, at my office, the conference room, and we were told that uh, eight of the 64 persons mm -hmm. uh, met all of the requirement and benchmark qualification and have reported properly to duty. 52 or 54 of the persons so deployed. Some of them, you know, you can clearly see that uh, even though the government had authority, lame duck at the time, after pretty, practically after election mm. uh, uh, results have been announced, you are outgoing and you're deploying this number of persons. And so some of the people just pay their own way, mm. pack their bag, pay their own way. And since they left, they have not even. They have not even reported to the various embassies, Liberian missions abroad. They have, some of them have not even reported to the various embassies for work. So, uh, and they are out there in the name of Liberia, uh, foreign service. Uh, what what are those countries? Some? Uh, not at the top of my head, but okay. Ethiopia, uh, Italy, mm. uh, America, I think in Minnesota, the consulate in Minnesota, and one of them. Several other places. But, but, but Senator, is it the, the wrong of deployment or it is the time for deployment? Or the those that were being deployed not qualified? So it's, for, a, for it's a combination of all of those. 
So um, we we got involved, and the the Ministry of Finance is sourcing uh, the funding mm. to have those people repatriated, uh, so that it doesn't come across as wish hunt, which we do not intend. Repatriated voluntarily? No. Or forced? If they are recalling. Now you see those people. But there are people who you said they are not reporting to work. They might be somewhere with they, they, family people. So they still have communication in their hands, okay. properly signed by the seated official at the time, mm -hmm. seated authority at the foreign minister. In order to serve in the foreign service, your communication must be uh, signed by the minister of foreign affairs, approved by the president of Liberia. Uh, in the absence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the proper uh, designated authority. So once you have communication in your hand appointing you mm -hmm. uh, in that capacity, properly signed by the, uh, the, the, the relevant authority, mm -hmm. you are employed. Technically, in order to recall you, you have to be, you have to be recalled to the very channel. Okay. So the Minister of Foreign Affairs has taken some steps to repatriate uh, most of these people. That means the government is going to take responsibility to repatriate them to Liberia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Foreign Service, if you are going in certain capacity, you, you, if you are a woman, you carry your, your going, you go with your husband, mm -hmm. and certain number of your children that are minor, below 18. And if the government must repatriate you, under the circumstance, the government has to pay plane ticket for all of those family that you carry with you that were qualified under the regulation. Mm. So the, the the Minister of Foreign Affairs will be working along with uh, uh, the Finance Ministry to source the funding mm. to start to repatriate these people, some of them, or those that are to be repatriated within the next two weeks. Oh. So and is it there will be, there, there's, there's opportunity for revetting. Oh, okay. So that it does not come across because it is not the intent to do political wish hunt of these people. Uh, they, uh, we just want to ensure that people who are out there in the name of Liberia holding our diplomatic passport, representing the face of the country, uh, properly vetted and passed through the right channel and so that they can be properly placed. So in essence, that report is being implemented Yes, by the start of sourcing funding, correct for recalling, repatriation, and all that. Correct, and and the, uh, the the committee report also said there were some of them who met some most of the benchmark qualification mm -hmm. for civil service I and mean, foreign service duty, uh, so that uh, they can get the proper opportunity uh, to complete some of these processes. And but, but the eight deemed qualified for foreign service were they? They on the payroll. They are working. They are probably They're not coming back? No. But they went along with the wrong time. They went the wrong time. So it's not, it's not necessarily the wrong timing. The, the time that if, if, if you were outgoing government and you put and you just put everybody on the payroll, you are burdening the incoming government. The 68, 64, 68 new employ, employments mm -hmm. that we're talking about will cost the government a million dollar plus mm -hmm. for the new service. Because some of the positions were not active, they were not part of the payroll structure of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in foreign service. Mm -hmm. So when you create additional, which is within the prerogative of the ministry, in keeping with the law, to create additional portfolios in the foreign service. But if they were not budgeted for, there was no salary, it's not vacancy that was filled. There were new, most of them were new portfolios established, mm -hmm. like third secretary in his embassy, second secretary in his embassy. Some of these portfolios were not existing. They were created. They were to created accommodate. to accommodate these new employments. And in doing that, uh, some of the employments did not meet, according to the foreign ministry, mm -hmm. did not meet the benchmark requirement for people to serve in. Uh, some of the requirements you must have been in the foreign service, you must have attended the foreign service institute, and you know all the kind of uh, benchmark requirements. Some were not met, mm -hmm. and so these are the people. Uh, some of them will be repatriated. 
Some went to foreign service, uh, uh, the Foreign Service Institute. Mm -hmm. Some did not meet other requirements. You just need to fill those ones out and then uh, bring them up to speed. And then where, where is required, you can do some redeployment or even assign them uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here. Mm -hmm. So it's not a political wish hunting. It is only trying to set the record straight. Okay. Uh, Senator, you have so much good words, praise for the leadership of Pro Tem Yomli Kanga Lawrence. Maybe it's because she's a political leader from the same party, you've known her for years, uh, but it was not until recently the her leadership, the Senate, came under serious criticism for something that had in the beginning called retreat. Uh, people were talking about, you know, kind of budget that was a portion for that retreat. Was that a fair criticism of the Senate leadership? No, it was a political talk. And at a certain point, it was bothering us. At this point in time, we're moving on. Some people start in 2020 now, talk and fight too early. Very aware. Well. No, it, it was not just, it was asked, not just opposition. It was people who supported the government. You ask questions. Yeah, but you're trying to shift blame on one no, side. No, no, you side. ask questions. Let me answer. I'd like for us to have conversational <laughs> discussion. Yeah, well, you will check in. When, you know, it's a serious question you ask. Uh, there are times somebody, you just going on the road and somebody passing with a car, they just splash mud on your clothes. And they're gone. You are the one left now to brush that mud off or have to go home to change your clothes. And all that time, your time going for nothing. We went on the election of Senator Nyombi Kanga Lawrence as President Pro Tempore of the Library Senate. Mm. Uh, the leadership, we decided as a Senate, we'll do a retreat to put the leadership vision, what do we seek to achieve as a Senate on the Joseph Nima Buaka administration, led by Nyambi Kanga Lawrence as pro -tem. What do we seek to achieve? How do we seek to achieve effective oversight responsibility? The reason the public beat on us collectively, sometimes mostly individually, day long, day long, day long, is because when the institution it's not doing its effective oversight. All the talking we're doing is almost for nothing. If we pass law to regulate, to direct traffic, and the traffic officer is not effective in directing the traffic, the lawmakers get the whipping. If we pass law to, to punish drug dealers, and make the punishment even harsher, stringent. If the DA or the people who are responsible to do prosecution are not prosecuting crimes for drug, the lawmakers get the beating. So, and the only way we will not get the beating of the people understandably is if we can collectively as an institution provide effective oversight. And what do we mean? Mm. Vavle is Minister of Finance and Vavle uh, failed to provide budget performance report or the Education Ministry is not receiving the part of the budget but revenue is being collected and we put 111 million in the budget for the education sector. Then the Minister of Education said no money to buy truck in the public school in Claratown. The first question the public raises is, what are lawmakers doing? But 111 million in the budget. A 10 dollar career is not in a public school in Claratown, for instance. They said, what are lawmakers doing? Now, the oversight of the lawmakers is to bring the Minister of Education to ask her question. Why no truck in our school in Claratown? Then the Minister of Education will either have to tell us, even though you put 111 million in the budget, the Minister of Finance gave me five cents. Then, Senator, let's go to the retreat and the criticism thereof. Hey, boss man, 
are talking to like people. You know, I want to know if that if those criticisms are fair, genuine in your own mind. Because if the you let me, if it, just come from one side. If you let me, if you let me flow, <laughs> I want us to have. You know, what you're busy. I will become here regularly. <laughs> no, not <laughs> not enjoy. Problem. Anytime interview seems to be interruptive or combative, the public don't get it. I'm trying to pin a picture to come back to your question. Yeah, but let's be, so do the summary. Patient. Yeah, do the summary. Patient. And I stay really, really. Do the summary. If I go beyond my time, I will particularly pay for the air time to extend the show. I will ring with the management. Uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. Then, we, as an institution, must send for the Minister of Finance. Say, we allocated. 111 million in the budget for the education sector and part of this 11 million 111 million is to provide instructional material why not talk in the public school they we call the minister of education the minister of education say 111 million in, in the budget here yeah, i receive five cents from the minister from the minister of finance yeah. We asked them, LRA, the Revenue Agency of Government, they say they're collecting the revenue. Mr. Final Minister, why are you not providing money for the education people to do their work? If the Minister of Education cannot answer that question, cannot provide a reasonable answer, the Senate, in majority, in its oversight function, must have the courage and the spine together to say, we don't have confidence in the Minister yet. Mr. President, we are voting no confidence in this in this minister for derelation of his function. Mm. And if the, if the president won't move that minister or or reprimand that minister, that senate must have that same spine in majority to say, Mr. President, if you don't move the minister, we will not comply with you. We will put on a non-compliance posture. Because vote on no confidence only for the record. If the president is still pleased. With that Minister of Finance, that Minister of Finance will remain there. But if in our oversight function, we put out a non-compliance posture with the President until he moved that final minister, and the President removed that final minister, the next final minister will do his work. The day the Senate put money in the budget, and the money is being collected by LRA, there will be chalk and career in the public school. That why we that part of the thing we decided on our how we do our oversight function. What leadership leadership vision we want to bring mm. so that it can impact the general public is why we went to retreat. We went to, we plan a retreat in January on the election of Nobody Kanga Lawrence as pro term and the leadership uh, on which I'm humbled to be the third ranking official in the Senate as chairman on foreign, of, uh, foreign affairs. That retreat did not happen until June. We went to Grand Basel County in June four day retreat. A rubber is Thursday, Friday and Saturday mean deliberations, Sunday, church service and then departure. We're coming from beginning, all of a sudden one million institutions say the people carry seven hundred thousand to Gambasa County. In Gambasa County, we carry the National Bureau of Concession. Can't tell us why you're not implementing, enforcing the act creating the National Bureau of Concession. Why did we create the National Bureau of Concession? We created it because all the concession agreement we went on an institution that will ensure a uh, uh, follow-up implementation and compliance on what the concession is supposed to deliver and all the kind of things. Can't tell what the law has issued so that we can reflect on the law for other repeal or amendment or something. The LRA came. How can we Increase the budget to one billion and above. So there were institutions. That institutions went that went there. The media was there. There were two days of deliberation. We review our rules. Part of the rules were if the president nominate people, not not just this president, any president going forward, nominate verbally on the Supreme Court bench or as a judge, in which is a lifetime job, a job, twelve persons civil majority should not carry you there. Uh, two ten majority of the membership of the Senate because you're going on left time job. Mm. Simple majority should not carry the two ten majority of the membership of the Senate, meaning twenty or more person 
my vote for you to be a justice on the Supreme Court bench or a judge, or, and including interning position. Because as it is, civil majority can make you chief justice. 16 persons go to session, the majority of the 16 can vote to elect you. Senator, your, there's no denying the intent of the retreat. If, 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 you don't, if the public don't know what would they are at retreat, they would think that even they it was a good intent. So the good intent was the reason they put seven hundred thousand dollars for you to be discussing seven hundred thousand. Then to be discussing what we did at that retreat, what we're bringing back as leadership, so that we can change the Senate, change our world doing things, so we can impact in a positive way the Liberian people. That's what they did. That want you to discuss. They threw seven hundred thousand at us. We said no. We did not take seven hundred thousand at a retreat, it will be insensitive and reckless. That place is the place we call the House of Elders. The House of Elders means you must think wisely, you must do things judiciously, and you must be responsible in your behavior. Mm. We budgeted 50000 for that retreat. For the four-day period. For the four-day period. 30 senators and in, also 108 persons. Facilitators, the secretariat, the secretariat, security, mm -hmm. media people, uh, support staff, 108 persons, mm -hmm. 50,000. All the 108 persons, that is Manans, the protem who slept in her own house, all the 107 persons, including the media people that were formally invited, nobody paid their own hotel bill. The hotel bill were paid from that money. Nobody fed themselves. The only people who fed themselves were those who ate, the, who may have eaten what was provided, and they were not satisfied. They go for the second round on the second, for the own pocket. You understand? <laughs> and then all the media people, apart from lodging them, feeding them for the number of days they were there, mm. not just the media people, but everybody, at least the media people even got, I think, ten or 15,000. I'm not clear with the amount, but I think not less than 10,000. Each of the media person. After shattering them. Labyrinth dollars. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. If more than 20 generally there, we'll get your 10,000 US out there, and we'll get the whole budget. So what was the budget? The budget was 50,000. 50,000. Out of which, mm -hmm. out of which, uh, we had the report clear for expenditure of 47,000. When we said we, we budgeted 50,000, and we use for the seven thousand. Some people with master degree and all because of politics. They said we gave him two conflicting amount. How is your budget of fifty thousand and the expenditure of forty-seven thousand dollars a, a conflicting? So amount? you have three thousand left over. Of course, from that fifty thousand, one hundred and eight persons lost for four days, at least three nights because on the fourth day it was departure. 103 persons managed the protest, lodged and fed, and then people giving transportation allowance to return to Moravia with 47,000. How was it wasteful spending? So that 50,000 was taken from the Senate budget. From the Senate budget. My point is, my argument is, it is not that you spend 100,000. Once you take it from your budget, that's your budget. No, but you are, no, the, 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 the debate that ensued was, we took 700,000. We did not take 700,000. And that the nature of the and when we didn't prove, require... when we could prove that we did not take 700,000, then they brought in other amount. And every time they bring in new amount, they say, we well, can't clarify. We don't have time for that. We wanted to first... Prove with credibility that we did not take 700000 for retreat. If you pay your school fee money, your rental money, your car pay, I mean your carpet board money and bull bear money, maybe all at the same time, it does not mean that because you go all at the same time, it means all for your school fees. Under the government, under this regime, uh, under this administration, for six months, there were no operational budget. We passed the budget on April 30 and it was approved by May 8th, there about May 8th, May 18th mm. by the president. So there were backlog of funding that was stuck at the Ministry of Finance mm. because we had to wait for the passage of the budget. To legitimize spending. Correct, to legitimize spending. 
And so when the budget was passed in May, then the finance ministry started to offload those of funding or of, of, of allotment that was in arrears for the month when the budget was not passed. So maybe it's an unpleasant coincidence that some of the you know uh, a weird funny came just around the time we we're going to retreat. Somebody just put all in one bucket and said that what we care to retreat. Now we 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 owe a responsibility to the people to explain to them that it did not happen. Some people got it stuck in their head. You can't take it up. We can't do anything about it. So we we'll move on. But our retreat was to put our leadership on Nobody Kanga Lawrence into perspective. The GSC had audited the Liberian Senate. They had done system audit. They have submitted a report with recommendation. We welcome it so that we can put system in place in our place so that we can start to do transacting or audit so that when we spend government money apart from our salary, when we spend government money, the GSC can come audit and say, you're dating the railway, you're doing the railway, this other one will use us out or for the purpose on internet and if prosecution will be recommended, it will be recommended. Those are the things we try to put together, and that's what the retreat was about. And we passed that stage, yeah, but that retreat will move on. S Senator, who keeps committee operational funds? For example, you as chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yeah. Your operational funds, where is it? Who keep who keeps so, it? Is it, is, yeah. it, is, it, is it part of is it so, part of the yeah. we have we got a budget line for committee hearings and committee functions. Yeah. It is kept in the Senate account. The Senate account, and if you have to access it, uh, they be as, as chair. So you as chair, yeah, you you bear full responsibility of the expenditure, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, if we do is the committee, but the chair response. I, I I speak for the committee, and I take responsibility of what the committee does. Because so, I, another criticism. And I so and yeah, so if the committee have to access funding, uh, uh, a ratification is before us, a mm. document or a bill is before us, for instance. And we have to, when you send a draft bill, we have to circulate the draft bill to all 30 senators that photocopy. You have to research. You got, uh, no, apart from research, lead our research, but we come into it. The poor team will just over there collecting money and doing nothing. Fabri, if you send out one draft bill to pass into law, we got to make copies. And some of the bills, some of them are 20 pages, some of them are 15, some of them are 10, some of them are one sheet. But you still have to make 30 copies. And every time the committee meets, when we deliver it, we have to add a draft, draft, mm. and then we got to do new copies of the additional or subtraction. Every time the committee meets, and the committee sooner will meet two, two, three, four, five times before we can conclude on a final draft. To submit to plenary to debate and pass on. All that photocopy money is coming from committee hearing or funding. In order to do that, you have to access it through the Ways and Means Committee. It is not, no committee, each committee does not have its own account, it's a centralized account. But each of you, each person, each senator in that place, yeah. is, a, is a committee head, is yes. a head of a committee. Correct. So, so, so you, for example, my point is, yeah. because I have been made to understand that the committee operational fund goes into the committee head's pocket. That way you were made to understand? Yes. Yeah, that's the same way you were made to understand. No, I was not made to understand that. that. That's why I invited you to make that clarity. Yeah, no, but as who, as keeps, as who keeps the committee operational fund? You let, you, did you listen? I said that all the monies are in the, the Senate central account headed by, uh, under the direction of the Committee on Waste, Means and Finance. So if you have to access funding, you go through the Waste and Means and Finance. Mm. So each committee chair or each committee is not keeping their own money or funding for operation. No. It is in the Senate operation fund or uh, account. And if you have to do some work, you have to access it and make requests to the uh, the, 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 the channel mm. through the Ways and Means Committee and if it makes sense they approve it and then a check is issued. So to say each person keeping the money in their pocket that's the perception the public has and it is upon us to be making this simple simple clarification. S Senator, in the last administration you you were heard loud 
uh, uh, some say you are the one, you, you, you are the only man in the wilderness crying for atom, atomized budget. Yes. But you have a government that you supported and brought to power. Yes. Is the budget atomized? So, uh, if you followed the first expenditure request that President Bwaka made of 41 million in February, that was one of our arguments. We won program-based budget, at a mass budget, mm -hmm. and we want to see domestic deadlifts. If we don't see it, we will not vote for this budget request. And I voted no on the record. You voted against this budget? Hey, I'm talking about a 41 million expenditure budget President Bwaka sent to the legislature in February. Yes. I voted that was an emergency kind of budget thing, to just run. I voted no. Why? Because, 40, because 5 million was in our budget to pay domestic debt. And I asked the Minister of Finance, who has just resigned, and I wish him well with his health, to give me the domestic debt list. Since he did not provide it and provide it on time, I voted no. And I voted no, not in my house. I didn't vote as a bobo. I voted no on the record. One of the reform, I can humbly take a uh, 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 glory in, mm. is that the reform for us to vote on the record on crucial national issues, not ye and nay, not raising your hand, call your name, your county, and how you vote. You say yes or no, they mark it on the paper. I voted no on the record. Okay, I'm, what about the 2024? So I'm coming. Budget. I'm coming. The one count here busy long time. Plenty of listening. <laughs> hey, so I got over. You you have this kind of way of making the host sit down and just look at you. I like I like when I'm talking to the people, I like it to be conversational. You you interject and which is your professional duty to do as you will please. I will, I will always appeal to you for me to continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm not> <laughs> so, I voted no on our budget. Mm. This current national budget, mm. I voted yes. Why? Because they brought the nation, the domestic debt list. That was a taboo and boogie man. No lawmaker can tell you that they got it. For six years, it was a taboo. Why did we vote? We are the atom mass aspect because the various ministers appealed that they would do the atomization of their budget. We wanted to ensure that we have a program based budget. They will bring you one. So we are about to start calling them, send the budget not into. I see that becoming a norm. They will continue appealing. No, let's. Because you gave them the first pass. No, Bavre, so let me flow with this. Program based budget means. You got pro program. At a mouth budget means if the program you want to do cost one million, you tell all the program, say this year, I want I want for drug. I want for drug rehabilitation. Hmm? That program. At a mouth means, and if we say we agree with the program for DEA to go fight. I mean, uh, uh, do drug fight and to do have rehabilitation, and their, their budget is four million. That program based budget. The other mass aspect now is what you would do with the four million. The other mass ten dollar going so, fifteen dollar going so. So, for instance, the education ministry, if you ask up for one million dollar for arm chairs, mm -hmm. your program is to produce arm chairs in public school. If it costs one million dollars, you got one million dollars for that program. Mm. The other mass aspect is how much, how many armchairs one million can produce. And if you say, okay, one million dollars will produce twenty-five thousand armchairs, then you we need an other mass list to say how many armchairs will go to each public school and which public school and which county. You see, when you do that kind of budgeting. It's easy to track and it's easy to ask accountability questions. Now, all of this first budget, we were already running into May, all that thing, and the country running with our budget. We gave the government a lax period. 
We got the domestic debt. We got the program at aspect. Now it's time to account on the uh, at the mass aspect. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to hold back. You think because our regime will keep quiet? They will have to do the same thing that we replace the regime for, the we are regime for. They will have to do the same thing and justify that they did it too. Then we're not supposed to replace yeah, it. That is that's the belief of some people. They believe that you are not genuinely hold this government accountable because you have brought it to power. Fafle, I will become no ERBC plenty time because ERBC across the country. The way ERBC is now the state radio. We want to make it a state radio. You got to encourage dissenting views here too. Sit, let us sit in the studio I will like do this. That. So, uh, 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 during the confirmation hearing of the Minister of Information and the ERBC Director General, I, as chair of the Senate Committee on Information and Broadcasting, I insisted that we ensure that the Senate deliberation will be live on ERBC. We we'll make provisions for that. Since we became chair of the Senate Committee on Information and Broadcasting as well as on Foreign Affairs, most of the deliberations of these two committees have been aired live on ERBC. Confirmation hearings. I'm sure you can attest to that and the listening public can also. So we we'll bring the deliberation of the Senate on ERBC live almost every Tuesday and Thursday, especially when there's critical issue. Why did I go that route? If ERBC were going live, you will know that I'm one of the persons who have said firmly, publicly, and with action, that none of President Barker's nominees who are before us about tenure position should pass until we get clear on the tenure issue. No certain lawmaker from CBC will do that against George Reagan. I'm one of those persons who have been public before the president publish his asset, requesting the president and encouraging him to publish his asset. Thankfully, the president has done so. Mm. The president has listening ear. No certain lawmaker or citizen, loud as it may have been, in opposition, but when they were in the ruling seat, no one could tell president we are publicly or quietly do this is wrong. What are you doing? I've done it. I voted against President Parker's budget. So uh, uh, I'm you assure us. So no, now we're assuring you, the public need to know what some of the media people are hiding that we're doing. Because suppose they're telling them, talking, telling them, acting. Let me tell you why I'm not talking every day. Menchovete will tell me, and he should tell you, and some of our people who are listening out there, when you get key to the door, don't knock it. When you get key to the door, when they give you key to the door, it means they want you to have unhindered access to enter. Did some of your police have made a mistake already? Well, it's up to them. I'm saying, when you're growing mature and you're wise, when you get key to the door, don't knock it. You knock the door only when you put a key inside okay. and you find out that they change the Selena and then get a new key or even though you get a key but they put something behind the door, then it means they still want you to knock it. Yeah, in essence, you're saying you got access to I the have president. have access to President Boaka. You will go to him. And we, we, yeah. stay in, we stay in door and we have to correct some things. Okay. If we did not have key and if we were not in that room. When he's hesitant, you will come out? I'm a senator for the people. And if they require me speaking up on some issues, I will do. I will not sit with my president. We correct some things inside. Mm. He agreed for us to correct some things. Then I can also I can make morale already. That's immaturity. Okay. Now the things that the things that he insists on doing that are in my view that are correct, like putting points on tenure job, I said no. And I'm standing up to that. I decided when he sent a budget for forty one million dollar and they couldn't give me domestic debt list, I voted no, not in my bedroom. Secretly, I put that door on the Senate floor on the record, and I can go on and on, on and on, on and on. Okay. But you see, when it, when some people already looking at 2029 already, and some media people already have decided who voice they will carry and who voice they will not carry, you can understand. Senator, <laughs> I, I can see us going over both things. And we will pay. And you will pay. And yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> and, uh, and as chairman of the Committee on Information and Broadcasting, I will be requesting management to extend the program about 30 minutes. Okay. Have you read in the media? I know you're coming here now. <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah. Have you read in the media about government? It is being reported that government is believed to be hurting or stalling uh, Ecowas's appointment of the former foreign minister. Since you are the chair on foreign affairs, I just thought to bring this to your attention that the government is believed to be stalling or objecting to the appointment of the former foreign minister, the Master Sakimia, as ECOWAS rep to neighboring Sierra Leone. Do you know about that? I heard about that, and so I'm um, in discussion with the foreign minister. Because my understanding is that that slot is not a designated slot for a particular country. It is the discussion of the head of the, the, I think the committee, the president of the commission, to decide which citizen, equal citizen, can occupy that position. I have to properly inform myself so I'm engaging with the foreign minister so that I can properly inform myself so that I can be able to give an opinion, I mean, an informed position regarding that matter. As it stands, you don't have definite position. No, I don't have a definite position. What I know is that it is not a designated position. So it's not a, uh, I could be wrong, but my understanding is not a position that is designated for Liberia. No, it's in the purview of the Air Force president. Exactly. Air Force so it's not a position designated for Liberia to make a recommendation or choice or to say it's a rotational thing and it is Liberia's time and the citizen of Liberia. It is in the purview of the President of the Equus Commission to choose any Equus citizen. But well, I think in the spirit of coordination, I think uh, the uh, Equus normally will seek information from... A recommendation. Uh, and uh, I'm not saying it is what the process is. Mm. I say uh, in the spirit of coordination, if you wanted to appoint a citizen of a country, mm, you might want to ask questions about the person's record and mm. their standing with their own country and all that stuff. So, but I'm trying to inform myself so that my opinion can mm. be informed. Okay. Because sources from, told me from ECOWAS that it was not a done deal. So I thought to bring it to your, to your attention. Anyway, where is Liberty Party? It's been, it's been quite long we haven't heard about Liberty Party. Um, Liberty Party was famous uh, of may I say infamous in the 2023 elections for some of the wrong reasons. Quite mild confusion. Is Mr. Benete still the chairman? Musa Benete is chairman of the Liberty Party. Mm -hmm. That's something we say over and again. Everything that happened for the 2023 election, mm -hmm. everybody to where God wanted everybody to be. It's time for reasoning to prevail. And reasoning is hopefully being, uh, reasoning is hopefully prevailing. Mm. Uh, there was a meeting, we didn't want to go public with this, but sometimes it's good to give your partisan some information. There was a meeting held in the political leaders, uh, with the political leader and the chairman, uh, Musa Bilete and Nambi Kanga, uh, with few persons from both sides. Uh, that meeting was held last week uh, in her office, and there are roadmap to reconciliation that has started, and I think it is fair for us to keep it under the belt. If I had not even said this, you wouldn't even know that Musa, uh, me, uh, normally Jacob Smith, and those of us who met last week mm. in the Portland office. You wouldn't know if I had not said this. So that means we're doing a lot of stuff now. Low key. Because sometimes, but the same when you go home, don't make not or else you will not care anymore. Anytime we want to reconcile the party, we will start it with publicity. Mm -hmm. Pe people benefited from the party party's division. And the party institutionally got hurt. Uh, people benefited from the party party's division and we owe it to the institution and our partisans to right the wrong and in our spirit of righting the wrong we don't want to be all public about it until we derive something concrete but there's something in the works okay 
I, I, I would not want to put you too much because of that, because of the reconciliatory uh, advancements and efforts and all that. Do you know that you're going for elections 2029? I'm getting report that the owner of Freedom, Omen Samson, will contest against you. Are you worried? I'm worried about what I'm doing today. 2029 will play itself. Look, anytime politicians start worrying about the next election, they can be losing. By the time John Weir enter office, they start talking about 12 years, 25 years, 36 years. Where they But do you think that you still command that? That voice, that support base, 20, what was it? The time, the two times you, you, you went to the elections and won by wow margin. Do you think that you still have that? It would be an illusion for me to think so. Most of them, once you enter office sometimes, not that you don't doing it work. So now you gave somebody a very type of money, you lose that person already. So we can understand that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but you look, uh, Vavlin. 2029, God itself to worry about. What I'm concerned about is for this rescue mission for us to do right by the people in the country. 2029 will play itself. Any politician who worry about the next election coming to fail, do what you have to do today and every day. When the time comes, that time will decide itself. That politician always worry and concern themselves about, about next election. That leaders always worry and concern about self, themselves about the next generation. We should be concerned about how we can create the platform for the next generation. How we can create the enabling environment for our people to get jobs. For them to stop singing zipways and moons behind us. For them to stop praising us for $50. For them to stop being to our doors for baby diapers and their children's school fees. Those are the things we should be worried about rather than more concerned about you see, but, but, but the we when you were six months in under this administration and in my term as senator I still get five and a half years and you ask him about 2020 yeah, but I have so to ask those, me. no you don't have to ask you have to ask me yeah, because, I can answer yeah, then, because the, the, the point is so those who want 2029 let us start worrying about it I'm saying that already no, you, maybe you're not worried about yourself but other people worry about you for oh, the fact that the psychology of our politics is so yeah. that Pro pro government legislators yeah. lose certain portion of their support base. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. People who supported you because you were a loud voice in opposition, yeah. morally some kind of, yeah. right now they see you for. No, you, you, no. You pro. No. You pro. They no, may you not make, support you because. No, you're making a mistake. That, that, you're that's making a small mistake. You may be right there, but you're making a small mistake. You're not entirely yeah, right. Yeah, tell my mistake. So. Majority of the people who voted for me were in opposition at the time, right? Even seditions voted for you. Chief, I said majority. Yeah, I said, yeah, oh, so yeah. I can be careful, you know, they say I can tell you, so I can be careful, I can be clear. <laughs> majority of the people who voted for me were in opposition, right? Mm -hmm. So take that same majority and bring it in the ruling government. Because most of the people who are in opposition with me, eh, were in ruling when 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 when, 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 when job distribution so, some frustration so that that exactly the reason why i said it would be an illusion to myself for me to sit there and say maybe i still command 100 percent of the support base i had before don't forget there were folks from anc some still support me notwithstanding my probably majority may be angry because i leaned to war and supported joseph walker against comments you don't expect that base to be supporting you uh, you think people from the unity party who saw what we did you want me to talk 2029 politics now one i don't have time for 2029 politics i have time for what we have to do today 11 o'clock today i'm supposed to be part of the the public accounts committee of which i'm a member of the senate public account committee for us to begin public hearings into Audit uh, reports that were dusted under the last regime. Mm. The audit reports that were conducted, reports submitted, no actions taken. Today begins the public hearing. And some of the reports done. Well, so uh, I don't want to give an opinion. You see, 
audit report does not mean somebody is automatically criminally guilty. Sometimes no system in place. Sometimes they give you money to buy bread, and you say, okay, send bread in the house, I will buy oil. The audit report say you use the money for the wrong purpose, but it does not necessarily mean you use the money to, for yourself. The audit report could also say you didn't buy bread, you didn't buy oil, you didn't buy coal, you can't account for the money. They don't want it, then we'll send it to LACC or Jesse Ministry to do criminal investigation for prosecution. So if I'm going to sit at a public hearing to review audit report and I start giving verdict audit already, mm. I have prejudiced the matter and conflicted myself. And as a leader, you don't do that. So, Vavle, let me repeat. The seat I occupy today, God first and the people's blessing. In 2029, the people will decide. My worry right now is to go to work and do the people work. The people who will replace me, that they one can be on the radio station every day. And, and, and one of the group of posts said, they don't already not receive money for car. For the day last week, I said, if you show proof that I not receive money for car on the budget already, I'm sitting down on it. I will not even go to work. And if I go to work, say, I authorize him, most of to come take me from there. Send out time to shut up. So the people who won't do 2029, they don't want to get me talking all kind of things and lying and throwing all kind of political mud. Right now, I'm like the guy who walking on the road and car just splash water on you. You get a headache to go back on the team or wipe the dog on you, but I car gone. So all the political orchestration mm -hmm. is none of my concern, yeah. none of my worries. Don't even move me in an inch. When, some, when the time comes for politics, we will see some of the political weaklings come in for me. Yeah. Senator, before we take calls, let me ask you this whole question about yellow machine. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, what's your thought about the yellow machine? And the debate arising from the, from the House, some lawmakers think that the, the president's communication is vague. Um, uh, they thought that it, it is not something that should come to them because it's non negotiable right now. And but meanwhile, the yellow machines are coming. There's no reason for the yellow machines to be arriving while the president is communicating to the legislature, the House of Representatives. I would, I would not want to speak for the executive because to do so would be I'm already compromising myself when I'm supposed to do the final approval. Rectification, not rectification. You need to rectify and rectify two slightly different things. Rectify, the R-A-T-R ever, to rectify something mm -hmm. which is legal approval, a legislative process to approve a deal consummated by the executive. That rectification will have to be done by us. And when that time comes, I will state my position. But I can clearly tell you that I want a machine. All the people who are renting a body machine, baby, they will tell you, I want a machine, but no, anybody staying for the machine, <laughs> it will crush them. But let me tell you something. Even as a ranking member of the rescue mission, mm. when President Boaka finally concludes his arrangement in keeping with his executive function to negotiate and enter into contracts and treaties, none of which is binding on the country, until the legislature approves it by ratification, when President Boyka finished, we will ask the question. If that man brought a machine and said he wants to give it to us, how much for it? Why this man alone? Will you ask the hard questions? Of course. And in fact, the day we're doing a ratification debate or something, your business will carry a life. If the machine is ten dollar, we will find out whether the same machine is eight dollars somewhere. And why you chose ten dollar machine over eight dollar when the same machine almost to the same place, but one is eight dollar and one is ten dollar. The same machine, the same quality, the same location. Then they will have to answer. Maybe the people who selling the eight dollar want all their money right now, 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 now. And maybe the people who selling the ten dollar say we can take it on loan credit. And with that kind of explanation, I'm not saying exactly what it is, I'm trying to paint a picture of the kind of question we need to ask. Mm -hmm. And did you pass through all the processes? If not, why? 
If you don't do it, we have to clean it up. And we must clean it up before we do anything. Uh, President Baga will not get put machine in Liberia on a car road to do our national roads without the proper thing. That is why the president wrote a simple letter. You think people are missing out on the content of the letter? Yeah, because when you put politics in your head for it, you know, one of my friends can say, don't like your opinion in your head. <laughs> when you come in from your heart, the opinion you get or something you like it and you lead it, it won't have a sense to enter. <laughs> because when you get a mindset about something, mm. it's hard for you to subtract from that mindset or add sense to it. Because Anything else, it makes sense to you. Don't lock your opinion room and leave the key room. It's hard for you to open your head and subtract from the thing that you put it already that was not correct or our new thing that's supposed to enhance what you put it. So, uh, President Boaga's letter was simple. That's why you see, you don't hear lawmakers talking about it again in the Capitol building and in our chamber. The President has said he gave us Genesis how the thing started on gentleman agreement. It is now maturing to negotiation and this the last stage is when you finish and everything finish he will send it to us and we agree good they will not agree the poor part of mission care by all they will send it here case closed mm. yes <laughs> uh so he was in essence you were just informing the the letter was not a letter for debate it was information of anybody who get common sense went to go school that, that i have something anybody who get have... common sense uh -huh. And when to go to school, that letter was informational. Okay, it was conveying. The letter was informational. The president wrote the speaker, and the president wrote the pro tem. Okay. And the letters were officially formally read on the in the chambers of the both, uh, 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 it, uh, in the plenary of the both chambers, and in the Senate, we have fifty percent opposition. We got about sixty percent ruling. Rescue mission senator, we got about forty percent independent. But all of us together, opposition, independent, and ruling rescue mission pro senators, all of our agree, all of maturity and early wisdom that that letter was informational. That that letter to debate. We are only chairing a debate informational thing. Uh, I know you you may have have your disagreement with the former president. But the whole rumor about him being denied access to VIP lodge or presidential lodge or all, how do you treat it before we take us? Just quickly. So I didn't want the discussion to be political. Uh, Chief, in six years, former President Ellen Johnson Salif traveled in all of Liberia. I want to exactly wait to say one million times. You all know that I have the woman knows your former president. Maturity, you see you the leader too, you have a role to play in how your support base will conduct itself. My people, they get VIP launch and they get presidential launch. Launch me, they play while they they, they play while people can sit down and wait when they're traveling. They, get smaller entertainment there or they can relax in a comfortable way while they're waiting for the plane. VIP launch means they, they play where former president, former vice president, current vice president, former and current speaker, former and current deputy, former and current pro tem of the Senate, and all former officials listed in the regulation. Mm -hmm. They can use a VIP launch. The presidential launch for the president who's sitting in the mansion. No, 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 no. And you can't have two presidents sitting in the mansion at the same time. The VIP launch is for former president and former vice president, current vice president, and all current and former officials of government. I don't know at what point in time President Weir has been deprived use of the VIP launch. See, this year say, John Weir as former president must use the presidential launch because that presidential launch was built. No, no, that's not an argument. Hey, God, you they said VIP. They said VIP something I, I, I haven't heard. Chief, 
The first time they say President Weir, former President Weir was denied use of the presidential lunch. We have to clarify. The second time, they say they deny use of the VIP lunch. When we pop into it, it was found that President Weir himself said he wanted to use the ordinary place. This matter was investigated by the Senate. It was brought back to the Senate immediately by Senator McGill. And immediately, we contacted the protocol department. Don't forget, as chair on the Committee on Foreign Affairs, the protocol of the Republic of Liberia for honor of our committee oversight. We contacted the appropriate protocol people. We contacted the RRIA management. They managed the managing director of RRIA sent an audio information and we place it in the Senate chat room for Senator McGill and those who were raising that issue. And later on, Senator McGill himself found out that the information that President Weir was deprived use of the VIP launch was not true. So that second incident went dead. This time, President Weir, former President Weir, is returning to the country, and a partisan decided to overwhelm the airport. There's no problem with that. When you go to the airport, the entire country go to the airport to welcome anybody. There are lines that you will not cross. You should not cross. You are not allowed to cross. When you cross in those lines, that's an international airport, and that's the only one we have. When you cross in those lines, the security will have to, to, to intervene. So President Weir has it in him too, to say, look, you're leave all the coming for me in all with all the you're way from into the party headquarters. And you one can feel or you come to the airport. We all have a responsibility to mm -hmm. so the meat of the matter is that President Weir has not been denied or deprived. It, it was use. investigated by the Senate, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. President Weir has not been denied use of the VIP launch. If President Weir wants to use a presidential launch, he can wait for 2029, maybe if he re-elected president. The presidential launch is for the current president. If you get citizen channel, you say, well, let President Weir go to the mansion and sit down near Borka because he's former president. That doesn't work no, that way. I, I, I don't know if I should say you stigmatize him, but for a certain group of people. But who can go to the airport and say, President Weir, for the use of presidential launch let, because he's former president? Let's take call 0770581886. <laughs> Zero seven seven zero five eight one eight eight six. You're listening to the Super Morning Show. We have this morning some extensive details uh, interview with Senator Darius Dillon of Montserrat County. Good morning. Good morning. Quickly, thirty seconds. Yeah. Thank you, the vehicles of lawmakers. Good morning. Good morning, bro. How are you? I'm fine. Quickly, 30 seconds. What's your name? Thank you. Uh, my name is Chuck Biggs, and I join from my usual residency in District 12. Uh, I want to say good morning to, to the Senator. You know, he wouldn't have said it better than the way he says it, right? You know, we got our friends and brothers. Quickly, 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pablo. I, I, I feel delighted this morning to speak to my boss uh, man. One will argue that I no longer will send it by. Am I calling him my boss man? Once my boss is always my boss. Uh, I want to say, hands up, Senator Dillon. Thank you ever so much. You see, Pablo, look, President, we are all to know that he, he is a former president, he's a diplomat. It's not like a former polit I mean like a politician, you know, like one who uh, treat other politicians.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the two quickly. Four, 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 Thank you, thank you very much. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. Where you call from? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Morning. What's the name? Thank you. Uh, this is Pastor David from the show number six. Let's hear you, so, Pastor. I was told that you could ask the real hard question. Yes, the Lord said. Where do you disagree with him? Thank you. Uh, morning. 
Let's take this last caller. Morning. Oh, thank God. Good morning, Sam. 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 He's not, he's not at the foreign ministry, though. he's ministry of state. Okay, you will respond. Thank you, thank you very much. We we'll have to hold a call there and go back to Senator Dillon. Uh, but I want to talk to my, to my <laughs> man who say I changed. I think changed. And I appointed by President Baga. I got no reason to defend government. I remain the same valley that used to host both sides here. You know, even though the environment was some kind of way. Anyway, Senator, go ahead. Hey, J.I., you phone the clever man. And before you go down oh. on my you say yeah. that was refused by the last administration in Monday. Yeah, so, hey, J.I., you clever man. Now you own a microphone, you can clarify immediately. You do get down to every day, by the time they said, they don't know, they don't want to come to the radio, no. But thank you, Bubbly, and thank you to the EABC crew for hosting us this morning. I want to say thanks to Bourgeois Radio 98.1 for relaying this uh, interview. Let me close with, uh, uh, first with the last mm -hmm. caller's concern. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Amara Kone and myself, We've written the Senate uh, to on the Gwespe issue, and the committees on executive and social security, they assist of this matter. The issue was that uh, Mr. Gwespe wrote the NASCO asking for funding to purchase vehicle during, uh, for the inauguration. Our issue is he did not have the authority at the time, but where are the vehicles? The vehicles are being used by the Ministry of State, mm. then the Ministry of State budget should refund that money to NASCO. You know, that's a recommended solution to this issue. And uh, so, and uh, uh, Grace Bay is the chief of staff to the president, and the president is like a father to me, even though I'm a senator, I can also hold the president accountable. But as a ranking rescue senator, we can write a letter for accountability with our own president and his chief of staff. We don't need to be loudly insulting people for people to know we are still the person that we were in opposition. Uh, you could not find any ruling party CDC lawmaker to ask former president we are when he was president. You know, they kind of hard question on the record. It was not possible. Uh, we will continue to engage with your busy and other radio stations. I have made it a habit now that when I'm appearing on one radio station, I will send my cards or relay on plenty of radio stations. So you either turn all your radios off or you force to hear me on any dial you pass on. Because of, if one, the one on your busy, somebody may be listening to another radio station and they say, We're not hearing from Dylan if you do. <laughs> People choose the radio station they won't listen to. When you on another radio station, they say, we're not hearing this video, the other thing happy, we hear you. 
Uh, we get energy to in every morning to clarify what the nighttime radio station is saying. Even the yellow machine, they put 80 million dollars behind it. They take it from 60 million to 54 million. They say everybody come and take bribe for the machine being there. And Boaga in New York, President Boaga now ran himself. He said that me in negotiation with my friend. We started with gentlemen agreement. Oh, the president know about it. That people around the president, the people just stuck with their opinion. They lack it. They throw the key away. They don't want to open their brains for new things to come inside for them to make sense of it. So we don't have time to waste. We will continue to remain the dealer that we were. This country needs better. We try to do better. We gave JFK $8 million, close to $8 million in the budget. A $10 per percent more is not a JFK. Then they ask, what is the senator then doing? The reason the people can be asking, and the people have concluded, mm. understandably, the Liberal poor are reaching the conclusion, if they are not there already, that the legislature is a problem. If I support you calling for the dissolution of the legislature, those people may be right by their sentiment. Because that same majority we can find to pass budget, what can happen to that majority for us to hold that majority together for accountability purposes? What can happen to that majority for us to say, Ms. Mara, Mara Minister or Mr. Minister of Health, JFK head, we put seven to eight million dollars in a budget. Why no ten dollar Paris to JFK? Why no forty dollar mattress at JFK? Why every time we put money in the budget, when nothing at JFK, then the people say the lawmaker then get there for the say. When we hold JFK people accountable, when we make a loud how much in the budget for them, how much they're receiving, and then uh, utilizing that money for the purpose, and we're making that to account or the president will have to take action, then the people will know that we'll do our work. Look in your community. The community where the public wealth minister lives and a lawmaker lives, if the road going to that community is bad, the people can go to the lawmaker, they can go to the minister of public wealth house. Mm. Look in your community. The community where the chief justice or one big man in the executive living and a lawmaker living in that community, everything the people can go to the lawmaker. The lawmaker that the first person they see they are attached to. So everything understandably they will deal with the lawmaker. Some people will be happy with the lawmaker. If I leave for here now, go outside there now. They put a house out there. If I manage to put my hand in my pocket, the leg shining today. If I get my car and pass the leg or bus. So we can understand I think the leg and count depending on certain situation of <laughs> look, I really so enjoyed this conversation today. Uh, yeah be more robust. Ask the tough questions. The only thing I was requiring or asking of you is that let's have a conversational, it can be tough, but let it be conversational so our people can get the understanding. Today, mm -hmm. some people who were angry or retreat business, if they have open mind, maybe they were adjusted. Some people who already have their mindset, you can't change it. Mm -hmm. Some people who got different, different reasoning to think that we were quiet or gone quiet. Again, I won't close by saying, I will not be quiet. I will be loud in a certain way. Certain way meaning the key that I have, the grace I have to have a key to the presidency. Where decisions can be made. Where we can correct some things from inside so that it can come outside. You can't have key and knock door. Sometimes you don't deserve the key. Mm. If they take the key for you, then you knock the door. If they change the Selena and they give you a new key, I mean they want you knock the door. And you know some knocking can be loud. I'm sure they're not very much. And so, so do they not, not open you can get there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but you, the door will open when you get a key. And nothing behind, nothing behind the door, you get a key, use a key. Senator, it's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, but if you get a key, you start yelling for us. Uh, you talk all the things for us, uh, and when you go inside, no use. Lastly, mm. this thing my mom taught me, anywhere you are, any organization, anywhere, you don't go to a meeting. Nobody misses you. You go to a meeting, your presence means nothing. Move on there. Or may it relevant. Because if your absence means nothing, nobody feel it. Your presence, nobody feel it. You just occupy space. And plenty of people just occupy space. That is why their duty is to be in a chat room. They say, oh, they're on the other radio station. They get joined there. 
They top it, they know what are you talking for? Are you talking for them? They say, Go disagree with you. They say, As you talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. We discuss everything now. But, Senator Dillon, thank, thank you, you very much for being on the show. I mean, um, it's a pleasure. Let's do this. Your business today. should be carrying the, the public hearing on the audit report, which is about to start about 11 o'clock today. Your business should be carrying a lab. We already made some arrangements mm -hmm. with the management of this station. We want our people to know what we're doing there. Because if we just leave it like that, the ERB is not carrying these things, which is a state institution and across the country. Some media institutions can just cut small, small except that they want to play and spin it their way. But if they both listen to the whole thing and they know we love they got doing what, saying what, and standing up for what, they will inform themselves. So I want to thank ERBC for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Vafle Kamara. Join the Super Morning Show tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye-bye, thank you, it's me. Thank you, it's me.